What's up guys and welcome back to another MATX PC build. In this video, as you can see, we are building once again in the MSI Pano M100 PZ MATX PC case. This case is becoming extremely popular now, so once again I have been asked to build into this case, but today we have gone with an AM5 build, 7500F, and they wanted to combine it with an RTX 3070. The purpose of this gaming PC is to be able to play in 1080p with high FPS as well as 1440p. And I think that's just about right for the parts that we are using here today. Now I won't bother mentioning all the parts we are going to be using, as you can see, these are the parts right in front of me. I will say that we are using a 32 gigabyte kick for RAM and a one terabyte for the boot drive. We're also going to be using sleeved cables. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this build. We won't waste any time. Let's just build this PC and we'll also run some benchmarks right at the end and see just how well it performs. As always guys, the first thing we're going to do is prepare our motherboard, put it into the case and then build around it. Let's go ahead and open up our CPU socket by pressing down on this lever, releasing it and grabbing onto the cover and pulling it up. Next, grab your CPU, pay attention to the markings on your CPU. You will see a triangle in the top left hand corner here and you will also notice on the other side there is a triangle as well. Then looking at your CPU, you're going to see notches on the top and the bottom. Looking at your CPU socket, you will also notice a triangle in the top left hand corner and notches on the top and the bottom. What you want to do is align all your markings and drop your CPU in nice and gently. Once dropped in, your notches should align and everything should sit perfectly. Go ahead and close up your CPU socket and with this lever here, ensure that the bottom part of it goes over, clamps over the top of your CPU the retainer. Go ahead and push down and push your lever straight back on. Remove your cover, open up your two RAM slots that you're going to use first. This is DDR5. It always indicates on your motherboard which two slots you should use first. It's always going to be A2 and B2. So we'll open up A2 and B2, grab your DDR5 RAM and align the RAM with the RAM slot. Align the notch here with the notch on the RAM slot. Once aligned, simply place it in and press down with equal pressure. So you can also do it one at a time, like so. As long as you hear that click, you know it's going to be seated perfectly. Go ahead and loosen these two screws for your SSD. Then simply lift. Also notice there is a protective sticker on here. Do not forget to remove that. Go ahead and install our M.2 SSD. Now you'll also notice here that there isn't an M.2 screw for this as you don't need it. It's got a quick latch, so that's great as well. Now line your M.2 with your M.2 slot as well as the notch here with the M.2 slot. Simply line it up, install on a slight angle, push in, press down. To lock in your SSD, you want to push your quick latch up until you see the black part of the quick latch cover half of the SSD. And that's it. That is your SSD installed. Go ahead and peel off this warning sticker, peel off this protective sticker for your thermal pad and align the two screws with the thread here. One of the threads is right here and the other is where your quick latch is. Make sure the writing is right way up. Push it in and align it. Grab yourself your screwdriver. It fasten until snug. Once it stops, you know that is good enough. And that's it, motherboard ready to be installed into the PC case. Let's go ahead and disassemble our PC case. This case is basically a toolless design and a lot of manufacturers are now doing this because it makes it so much easier to build into your PC case. Go ahead and remove your two side panels first. You've got a lever here which you pull on, simply pull on it and then lift. Same with the other side, you have your little lever here, pull and then simply lift. Next, you want to go ahead and also remove the top panel here. You've got two thumb screws, loosen them. You do not have to remove them completely, you just have to loosen them so that they are unscrewed to allow you to remove the top panel. Once done, you're going to see a little handle here, simply pull back and then lift. Lastly, you want to go ahead and remove this front panel here. Yes, it is removable. In order to do so, what you want to do is pull on the top here and then pull at the bottom. Be very careful, do not drop it because the front here is tempered glass, but this is acrylic. Now you will see the entire PC case bare. You've got a user manual here, we'll set that aside. You've got all your parts here, twisty tied to the frame. Let's go ahead and remove it. The first thing I'm going to say straight off the bat is you do not need to use the Project Zero motherboard for this case. A lot of people are under the misconception that you do need to use that motherboard. You do not. Today here I've got the MSI B650M Gaming Plus Wi-Fi motherboard and you're going to see that it's going to work just fine. Not only do they have the cutouts for the Project Zero motherboard, but the same cutouts are going to allow you to route your cables. I do like what they give you in this MSI package. They give you a tiny little GPU support, telescopic GPU support, and they give you a little bubble level to ensure your GPU is level. Just empty all our parts into a little box to keep it all together and they also supply you with a couple more Velcro straps. We'll grab our motherboard, line up our IO shield here, and then we've got two stands that protrude a little bit in order to allow you to install your motherboard just like this. That will ensure that your motherboard does not just slide down, slip down, and then damage the motherboard in any way. Grab your motherboard and place it straight in, aligning all your motherboard stands. There we are, that's one in at the top, 
and then we need to align one more in the middle here. As you can see, the motherboard isn't going anywhere. Be very careful, just leave it still until you get one screw in. Fasten one first, and then anxiety will disappear because you know your motherboard isn't just going to plop straight out. You can do whatever now, and the motherboard won't plop out. And here is now our CPU cooler. We're going to be using the Peerless Assassin 120SE White ARGB. This is a great cooler, one of the better ones. It's a dual tower, and we're using white here because we want to give it just that little bit of contrast between the case, the build, as well as the motherboard. And this will just give it that nice black and white look. Take out all your parts that you're going to need. They also supply you with thermal paste, so that's great as well. With a total of two, four, six heat pipes, so that's going to give you really sufficient cooling. Also, 120 millimeter fans just look great. With that done, let's go ahead and install the rest of our motherboard screws. And then straight away, we'll be able to work on our CPU cooler. And for the lucky last screw, and now your motherboard is ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and install our CPU cooler. Now the reason why I didn't install it off the motherboard, which would have been easier, is simply because you don't have to. I'm gonna remove this HDD SSD bracket by removing this thumb screw right here, and then simply lift, slide out. On this here, you're able to install either one HDD or two SSD 2.5 inch. We're going to need to remove the standard AM5 bracket so that we can install the AM5 mounting bracket for the Peerless Assassin. And you do that by simply removing these four screws here. And once they're removed, this will simply come straight out. The bracket just simply falls off and then grab your screws and set it aside. You want to install your pink stands for your cooler. And that's what these are right here. The pink little stands here. Push them straight on. Doesn't matter which way you put it on, it's still going to be fine. Just push them straight on, just like that. From here, you need to grab your AM5 mounting hardware and install it over the top of it. What I like to do is push our screw through and then push it on through until you can thread it. Just simply thread a couple of threads first and then install the other. Once you have threaded it a little bit, it will stay put and you don't have to worry about it. Now you also want to install it with the curve going into the center of the CPU. Do not install it with the curve going out, you want it with the curve going in. I'll give you guys a close-up once I'm done. Push it out as far as I can, then do the same to the other side. Now what you also want to make sure of is that it is centered as possible. Try not to have it off-center because the mounting screws for the cooler need to be centered. Before we get going any further, we're going to do a quick test fit and make sure the threads do line up. All right, so that's perfect. Let's go ahead and use the thermal paste they have supplied. For AM5, the dollop in the center is still going to work because it's still a very square CPU platform. Unlike the LGA1700, that's very rectangular and long. So a nice thick line down the center would be the better option for the AM5. And that's what I mean by a nice dollop in the center. With our thermal paste on, I'm just gonna lie this down now and we will install our CPU cooler like this. Okay guys, now this is gonna look a little bit weird because I had to reshoot this installation of this cooler because for some reason I had lost it. All you're going to do now is just have the CPU cooler alone. alone it to the threads of your mounting bracket. You've got one on the bottom and then one on the top as well. See this screw here? That has to align to the thread of this mounting plate here. And then one on the other side as well, as you can see right there. And then with a screwdriver, go ahead and fasten each side a couple turns at a time until you get it completely snug. The way you install your fans is pretty simple. Make sure that your fans are pushing air towards the rear of the case and exhausted out the back. And usually you want the side with the frame facing the side you want the air to blow. Now go ahead and install your fans. Grab your clamps, just like you see on that fan right there. You put it through like so, and then through the top. Align it where you want it and clamp it straight on, just like that. Do the same to this one here. Try to get it aligned and centered and then clamp it on. But don't worry if it isn't because you can always adjust it later on. Now that this side's done, we'll do the same to the other side and simply clamp it straight on, like that. Rinse and repeat for the last fan on this side here. That's one side in and clamp it down. After that, go ahead and check that it is in fact the same height. If it's not, just unclamp it and fix it. <laughs> All that's really left to do is to plug in your fan cables and your 503 pin ARGB. All I've really done, I've pushed it just behind this heatsink, like so, and then I've just pulled back all the slack to the other side. Now, you also have to remember that we have that splitter cable that we need to use. So what I did was, I plugged both fans into the splitter right here, as you can see. There's one here and one here. And the splitter plugs into CPU fan number one, right there, just here. And then the 503 pin simply plugs into one of these splitters that come straight off the hub. That way it's all synced together. Now don't worry about this because that's just my testing SSD. And that's basically it guys. That's how you install your thermal ride CPU cooler. My next step here would be to start routing some cables and pushing them where they need to go. So next we've got HD audio and type C. Our HD audio is usually in this bottom corner here. So let's go ahead and push that through. And our type C is just here. So we're gonna push that through right here. Now, before they keep falling back through this side, let's plug them in. Here's our type C right here. Bend that in and plug it straight in. 
Do not listen to anyone that tells you it goes in either way. It does not. It can only go in one way. For a USB 3, you've got a tab right here and there's a tab just here. Go ahead and align that. Be very, very careful. These 19 pin USB 3.0 cables can easily bend the pins inside the port. So make sure you fully align it first before you push it in or else it's going to be catastrophic. Front panel cable is just here. They turned it into an all-in-one, which is absolutely great. There is a pin missing at the top here. So make sure you align that accordingly and just push it straight in. Lastly, our HD audio right here. There's a pin missing right there. So you look at the audio, there's a pin missing on the top. So just align that accordingly and push it in. All right, so you're also able to install a fan onto this bucket right here. You just have to remove the screw here, and then you're able to remove this cage and install a fan straight onto here. With all that in, let's go ahead and install our power supply. All right, so here is the power supply. So let's go ahead and open it up. Let's just grab the cables that we're going to need. This is really simple. It really isn't difficult at all. And the one thing you also need to remember about fully modular power supplies is you should never ever mix cables with another power supply. What you will find is most likely smoke coming out or even cables melting because the pinout isn't exactly the same for every single power supply. So just remember that guys, do not be lazy, reroute your power cables and always use the cables that come with your power supply. Really simple, it's always labeled for you how you need to plug them in. Can't get this wrong guys. CPU. Our SATA. Although we are not installing any SATA for this build, we always plug them in first because if you ever need to upgrade in the future, you already have your cables routed, ready to go. So with all our modular cables plugged in, let's go ahead and install the power supply, move everything out of the way and slot it into here and line up your screws at the back here. Install it with the fan facing down, slide it straight in. Make sure all your other cables are not in the way and just slide it straight in. Get it in, line up your power supply all the way to the back. Next, you need to align all your power supply screw holes with the holes on the back of your case, which is just here. Right, you've got four holes that you need to align. Once aligned, go ahead and install your four PSU screws. Grab our four PSU screws. When you fasten, you fasten in an X pattern in order to bring the GPU as close to the back as possible. Snug, quarter turn, X pattern, and there we are. So next, we need to route all our cables where they need to go. Now remember, we are using sleeved power cables. So go ahead and release all your sleeved power cables. Install your combs if they aren't installed as yet. And push them all where they need to go, CPU. I'll push it through the top. And plug it in where it needs to go. All right, so now we've got our ATX, which is just here. When you push it in, your ATX tab needs to be on the outside, on this side. So make sure you push that in. And once you curve it, the tab should be on the outside. So go ahead and plug that in. And lastly, when it comes to installing your GPU cables, there are a few routes you can take, but it is really up to you in the end which you decide to do. Now for this case, you have this rubber grommet here on top of the PSU. That is most likely where you're going to install your GPU cables. Now what you also need to remember is you need to look at your GPU, look at how the ports are positioned because you need to ensure that when your cable plugs into it, if the tab is on the top or the bottom, make sure you route that accordingly so that when you plug it in, it goes in nice and smooth and you don't have to try and twist it to get it to work. So what I'm going to do is push this in, ready to go, with the tab on top when it comes out, because when I plug it in, the tab's on the bottom. Remember that. Let's also get the combs out so that we can make it look really, really nice once we plug it in. And leave enough slack so we can plug into the GPU. So now with all our cables ready to go, we can now sort it out on this side by plugging everything where it needs to go. Our ATX is simply going to plug here. Bang. Next, we have our CPU. Lastly, our GPU cables. It is a 3070, so you probably won't need to use separate GPU cables, but it's always safer to do so if you have it. It's gonna plug in our GPU cables. Okay, and here are our Molex and SATA. The ones with the Molex for this power supply, use this for the SATA that powers the hub. So you're gonna fold them away and then leave the two SATA at the end to plug straight into the hub here. We're just going to push them in and hide them behind the power supply for future hard drives. We have a SATA that comes off the hub. Let's plug that into our SATA here. From the hub, there is also a PWM connector that comes off it, as well as a 503 pin. What that's going to allow you to do is simply plug it into your motherboard and allow you to use the motherboard software to control the RGBs for your fans. Push it on through the top here. We've got a system fan right there. So we'll plug it into system fan. And then we've got a 503 pin right next to it, which is absolutely perfect. We just now have to do some cable management and tidy everything up.
everything's starting to look really, really good. We just have to do our final touches with all these table management. Because I want to keep these cables here as tight as possible, just so we can make everything neat as well. Keep these a little bit neater as well. Now to finish off with some full on zip ties and we're gonna be good. Alright, so now with cable management pretty much done, let's put on our SSD plate. So you've got these two tabs here that need to align with these holes. They have to slide on, lock it in, right? See how it's uh, all lined up now? Simply push down, it locks in, and then fasten your thumb screw. If you're going to install a 2.5 inch SSD, this is how it's going to look. There's one there, or you could have it this way, it's totally up to you. I would always do it this way, that way it's closer to where the plugs are. And the other one would simply go there. If you were going to install an HDD, you have the HDD markings here. Alright, so as you saw earlier, this is the graphics card we are using. It is the PNY XLR8 Gaming RTX 3070, 8GB VRAM. Now, for those of you who are thinking that PNY is a brand that you can't buy, well, you would be mistaken there. There's a reason why it has now become mainstream. That's simply because it is a reliable graphics card. If something wasn't reliable, I do not think they would be releasing it to the mainstream market. And PNY are now coming out with all sorts of different PC parts. So don't be discouraged by a brand that you don't see a lot of because 99% of all your PC parts are in fact made in China. This is a three fan card. It's got two eight pins and it does look very, very nice for what it is. Very nice metal backing plate and overall just a great looking card. So let's go ahead and install it. Imagine our GPU installed and see which slots you need to remove to install it. So from here, we need to remove slots two and three, not the top one. That would be for a PCIe times one device if you needed to install one for any reason. All right, remove these slots. Line up your PCIe times 16 slot with the PCIe times 16 slot on the motherboard. Ensure that your slots are on the inside of the case. And what I mean by that is, do not have them sticking out right here. That's not how you want to install it. Once it's aligned, simply hold it as level as possible and push straight in. Have your hand on the case and support it. And that's it. Grab your screws that you removed and install them. Now just get them in first and before we completely fasten it, we want to ensure that the GPU is as level as can be. And that's where bubble comes in. Let's fasten this. That's pretty good. So with the GPU in, let's go ahead and plug in our cables. So just line that up and then push it straight in. Perfect. So now let's just fix up these uh, sleeve cables, make sure we make it look as nice as possible. All that's left now is to install the rest of our panels. And of course, our antennas at the back here. And we're gonna be good. All right, so now let's uh, reassemble this case. So the first thing we'll do is push on the front panel. You just line it up. There's only one way that it goes in, as you can see here, and then simply just push it straight in. That's it. All right, now I'm just gonna put on the top piece, put it on top, and then slide it forward till it drops into place. There we go, and then simply push forward. And that locks it in. Fasten up your two thumb screws at the back here, and that secures the top panel. So now let's install our two side panels. So how this goes in is, you've got these two tabs here, and there are two little slots at the bottom of the case here. You need to slot them in first. And once that slots in, all you need to do is push it so it clips in. You have all this mesh here that's going to allow cool air to be introduced and hot air to escape as well. Even at the back here, you've got all this mesh so that cool air or hot air is always going to be exhausted and brought into the case and the case can breathe so much better. And lastly, our tempered glass panel for the side where you see everything. Same principle, line up your two slots at the bottom first and simply push. Look at that. Once again, guys, the MSI Pano M100PZ MATX PC case fully complete. Honestly, guys, this has got to be one of my favorite MATX cases to build in right now because it's just so 
well built and the way they have designed it just makes it so much easier to build in. Having a hub pre-installed, four ARGB fans that can be daisy chained and the tempered glass and the panoramic view of this is just magnificent. Although it doesn't have mesh for here or here, there is still plenty of mesh panels to allow air to breathe and your PC to cool. And don't forget as well, at the bottom of your case, you also have a magnetic dust filter that allows you to remove it and simply clean it as well. You've got magnetic bits here and here, and that simply just sits on just like that. And you even have room to install three more fans if you wanted. So down the bottom on top of the PSU shroud, you can put two more fans right there. Although installing fans there would mean it would be really, really close to GPU unless you were to use super slim fans like I did in one of my other previous builds. And you could also install one more fan here, which would also add as intake, meaning you would have three intake here, which also cool the GPU and allow a lot of cool air to be introduced into the case. So having tempered glass panels isn't really that much of a big deal because you have a lot of room for intake fans. All right, so before we just get into the benchmark, let's just take a minute here to appreciate just how well this PC came out. And I have to admit that it came out looking badass. I personally love this whole black and white look. Originally, I wanted to go with a black CPU cooler as well, but then I just thought giving it a white CPU cooler would also help to bring out that whole contrasting between black and white. But let me know what you guys think. Would you have done something differently? We do have the button on the front of the case here in order to control the RGB. Here, we have the button on the front of the case here. And if you press this, you're able to control the RGB. Now, if you were to press and hold, this would then change it to the mode of the motherboard software. And because we have it plugged into the motherboard, the hub, you now would then use the motherboard software to control the RGB colors. Another thing I wanted to point out is that when we were building this PC and I showed you guys the all-in-one cable for the front panel, with that front panel cable, you're able to turn this RGB button into a reset button because the splitter that came off the front panel cable was in fact your reset pins. So if you were to take the LED button that plugs into the hub and then plug it into that splitter, you would then turn this into a reset button. I hope that made sense. Personally, I love the blue-purple color scheme, but of course, just choose what you want. Even purple looks nice, white, as well as light blue. All these colors look fantastic. In the end, just choose what you personally like. As you can see here, we've also gone ahead and installed Windows 11 Pro on here. This is our final product. It turned out looking really, really good. All that's really left to do is to plug in our antennas at the back here. And that's pretty simple. Just grab your antenna and then screw it straight on. Your PC build will be completely done. Now let's uh, run a few games and uh, let's see how well this performs. The one thing we wanna focus on also is how much FPS we get. I'm assuming we're gonna get over 100 FPS easily because we are running the newer AMD uh, CPU, even though it's only a 7500F, and we are preparing it with a decent GPU as well. The RTX 3070 is pretty much on par with the 4060. Although the 4060 has a very small memory interface, it makes up for in clock speed, but the RTX 3070 has 256 bit, eight gigabyte VRAM is probably where it is lacking, but it still does very well. The other thing to pay attention to is your CPU utilization compared to your graphics card utilization. The utilization of your graphics card should always be a lot higher than your CPU. Even in CPU intensive games, you may see a lot more CPU usage, but your graphics card should always be at its peak close to 90 to 100%. If you get GPU utilization at 100% and your CPU is only utilizing up to about 30 to 40%, you know you've got a very good combination there because you always want your graphics card to be rendering and computing all the graphic intense tasks rather than allowing your CPU to do that. Of course, there are going to be unique circumstances. So now we'll boot it off my SSD and we'll run a few games and see how well it performs. My apologies here as well. I didn't realize that the speaker that's on the new PS5 keypad actually records as well. Usually you need to plug in a microphone in order for it to record, but the speaker on the keypad was actually recording. That's why you can hear the tapping. The other thing you also notice is the GPU usage is always at about that 100% and the CPU is just hovering from 30 to 40, sometimes even 60%, but it's always less than the GPU utilization. And this is what I was talking about earlier. So this is a great indication that we have a really good pair here. That for fun. 
All right, and well, there you have it, guys. Just a few games showing you just how the 7500F paired with an RTX 3070 can perform in 1440p and 1080p in a couple of games. The main takeaway from those benchmarks and those games is the GPU utilization was always a lot greater than the CPU usage. So that's a really great sign, letting us know that it definitely is an excellent pairing of CPU and GPU, and you'll be able to play most games in 1080p to 1440p. And I also think that this is a great example of excellent performance at an affordable price. Now, of course, there are other GPUs you can pair with the CPU, and you would get very similar performance or even better, even something like a 7600 XT, 7700 XT, or even a 7800 XT. But the RTX 3070 has come down a lot in price lately, so it just made it a very good choice for this build. You're able to snap one up used for like 250 even and as for brand new you'd probably get one for about $400 If you have any feedback or something you would like to share Maybe there's something you would have done differently Let me know in the comment section. I would love to hear your input After all this channel is all about showing everyone how to build PCs and share different opinions on different specs and hardware What one person do isn't always what somebody else would do and as for the build I really hope you found it enjoyable as much as I enjoyed building it I personally love the way that it came out, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section I would love to hear your feedback on what you guys would have done differently. Of course, there are plenty more to come, so be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. As always, this is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. Bye for now, guys.